I am by no means an electrologist. I have a better understanding of this sort of stuff than most people do, but I don't think that's saying a whole lot. Having said that, pretty sure this is pretty dodgy. This is the rectifier for the mag chuck for the surface grinder. In this video I'm going to replace this with this. Going from a half wave rectifier to a bridge rectifier, full wave rectifier. The plans I'm using for this I found specifically for this mag chuck for the Sanford SG48 surface grinder. I don't know how it applies to other mag chucks. If you need to make one, how you size the components. I'm just going off of what I found that I know works for this one. I do want to reuse the switches from this because they are original to the machine. So I'm just going through and desoldering all these wires to get them out. I started looking at all of this and trying to figure out how to mount it to a PCB board, which I was excited to do because I've never done that before. But looking at it more, this fuse is made as a panel mount. The rectifier has a mounting hole in it and spade terminals. This has spade terminals. The resistor has holes to mount it. The only thing that doesn't have any way to mount it is this capacitor, but pins on the capacitor line up with the tabs on the switch. So I can solder it onto this, mount all the rest of this inside the base, and I think that's going to be a really slick way to do it. I do need to drill a hole for this fuse, and while I'm at it, I'm also going to drill a hole for a master power switch, which will turn off power to the whole thing. This is definitely maxing out the capacity of my mill, but I'm set up now to drill the hole for adding this extra switch. I would like to put it under here, but there's not enough room, so I'm just kind of making a nice square here. I didn't bother tramming this to the machine, so I just laid it out, and I'm working off the layout lines. I don't have drill bits that are short enough to actually do this properly, so I'm just going to plunge it with a series of end mills. Got a little bit chattery there doing that counter bore, but it worked. The threads on this switch are a little bit shallower than the old ones, but it's still enough that that nut entirely engages down on there. I like it. I think that's pretty good. I flipped this around to the back, did the same sort of counter bore for the little fuse. And now I'm going to drill holes for the other components that are going to mount inside. It would be nicer to drill from the inside and do blind holes, but I think this is going to be significantly easier to the point where it's going to be worth doing it this way. I figured out that this ER20 collet chuck not only takes up less space than the Jacobs chuck, but also lets me choke up on the drill bit, which is really handy when I'm working in tight quarters like this. I was thinking I wasn't going to be able to get my tap follower in here, but with it jammed way up in the collet, there's just enough room to get a tap wrench in there, which is nice, at least for this number six screw. We've got a new power cord coming in, new plug on it. Would have been a good idea to put that on last, but I won't plug it in if you don't. Ground gets run to ground. The hot is going to get run to this fuse. This is a 5 amp fuse. It's supposed to be the amperage of the motor, which is 4 amps, plus 1 amp for the mag chuck. We're 
replacing everything with 16 gauge wire, which is what was on there originally. So at this point we've got line power coming in, running through the fuse, and running to the master power switch. As a refresher, the power that comes out of your wall socket is alternating current. If you plot voltage versus time for alternating current, it looks something like this. It's a sine wave goes positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. If you feed alternating current like this into an electromagnet, the poles in the magnet flip back and forth every time it changes, so 60 times a second for North American power. Having the poles flip back and forth is really handy if you want to run something like a motor. Of course, it turns out I do want to run a motor here, so I kind of prepped all of this off screen, just soldered wires on, shrink wrap bit. So the switch from the, for the motor is going to get wired directly onto the master switch here. So the wiring runs from the master switch to the motor switch and then from this side of the motor switch runs to the motor wiring. I also continued this wiring on to the demagnetized side of the magchuck switch because that flippy floppy bit with the northy southy parts is exactly what you need if your part has become mildly magnetic. If you expose it to that, it will scramble up all the magnetized parts and you'll get rid of that residual magnetism. So all this buttoned up here. So in order to actually hold the work down to the mag chuck, we need to turn our alternating current into direct current. So we want to approximate something that looks like this, ideally. That's hard to do. So what we need to do is add a rectifier in that turns these bits into positive voltage. The original rectifier in here took the AC sine wave and just cut off these bottom bits and left you with bumps. What we're doing is putting in a full wave rectifier which is taking this bottom bump and flipping it up like this. The other thing we need at this stage is a resistor to limit the amount of current that the circuit is drawing so it doesn't burn up the wiring in the mag chuck. This is a 35 ohm resistor rated for 50 watts. The shrink wrap's probably unnecessary, but I feel like it classes up the place a little bit. And then this resistor is going to get fed from the switched side of the master power switch. And then from the resistor, we're going to the actual bridge rectifier. This has four pins on it. These two are labeled positive and negative. So then these other two are for alter the alternating current to come in. This is where the direct current comes out. And I need to connect the neutral line from the switch to the rectifier. All of the connections on the switches are made now, so I'm going to go ahead and button those up and try to tidy this up a little bit. I've got all of these switches oriented so off is to the back. I figure that if I'm in a hurry and I need to turn something off because something's going wrong, just hit it, push it back. And I also feel like if I'm bumping it by accident, I'm going to be a lot more likely to be reaching past it when I bump it. So I'd rather it turn off than turn on when I do that. I don't know, personal preference. From the rectifier, we're going to go positive and negative. 
down to the switch. The only other component that's worth mentioning is this capacitor. So the capacitor stores charge. When there's extra electricity flowing through the circuit, it stores it. When there's not enough, not as much, it lets it out. So what it does is it takes our bumps coming out of the rectifier and makes it eh, maybe look a little squiggly like that, something like that. The only thing that's left to do is hook up the plug that leads to the mag chuck, and then just tidy all this up a little bit. There's obviously an awful lot going on in here, but I feel like that's about as clean of a job as I can do. It certainly looks a lot better than this. Got a new cable on here. I've got the motor wired back up. Let's give it a shot. Power. Motor works. Real moment of truth. So my mistake here was trusting positive, negative. What it actually is, is this is positive, this is negative, and these are my two AC inputs. I checked the resistor, it's still got the right resistance. I don't think anything got damaged. There we go. Success. I've still got a lot to do on this machine to get it back together, but as always, thanks for hanging out and making me feel less like I'm just talking to myself.